morning and welcome to Bethel. We are so glad that you decided to join us this morning. If you are visiting with us today, please fill out a Visitor's Connect card located in the pew and return it to the offering box as you exit this morning. If you are interested in becoming a member, please see Brother Nate for more information. To join our prayer team or request prayer at any time, please contact the numbers listed on the screen. Please check out our website for important updates and events here at church. Please see your update sheet for more information and your ways to give. Now let's stand and get ready to worship.
Have you have your Bible this morning? I hope that you do. Turn to, to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. 8 and verses 22. 8 and 22. I hope you're there. Are you there close? 8 and 22? Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go over to the other side of the lake. I want you to notice that it is Jesus making this, uh, it was his idea. It wasn't something they come to collectively. It's his idea to go to the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm on the lake, a storm of wind on the lake, and they were all filled with water, filled with water and in jeopardy. And it came, and they came to him and, and woke him, saying, "Master, we perish." Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, "Where is your faith? Where is your faith?" And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water to obey him. Our master commands winds, waters, waves. It simply doesn't matter. It is all in his control. Amen? Title this morning, title message this morning, On Course. By the way, this word is inspired, in air, infallible, eternal. Have you, let me ask you this. Don't raise your hand. Don't, have you ever felt like, you know, I've just been, I, I'm just ruined. I'm just messed up. I'm just ruined. I want you to know you're not ruined, but you're ready to move. You're on, dead on course. Some people say, well, if this hadn't happened to me, I'd be right here. No, I want you to tell you something. The steps, let me put it to you like this. God knows where he wants you to set your feet. And that's where you're setting your foot. That's where you're putting your foot at, right there where you're putting your foot. By the way, this is the original action, thriller, screenplay, real-life event, no real-life version. No names have been changed to protect the innocent. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Let's go to the other side. They're sitting around one day, and all of a sudden, Jesus says, i got a mission on the other side. He doesn't tell them what it is, but he said, i got to go to the other side. He said, let's go to the other side. And they say, like faithful disciples, they say, we're going with you. We need to go where Jesus says go. They don't really know what's going on. I have to tell you, there's sometimes I would not have gotten in the boat had I know what the waves were going to be like. Can I have an amen? How many has ever been seasick? Come on. Whoa. That is death being, you're alive, but you're dead still. Or wish you were. <laughs> Feel like you're going to be. If Jesus says, go to the other side, I want you to know there's something, I don't know what's going to happen in between here and there, but you're going to the other side. They launched out, and they probably thinking like that, most of us. What could go wrong? Jesus is with me. What could happen to me now? I have Christ in the boat with me. I want you to know, just because you have Christ in the boat with you, that probably means you're in tar somebody's target zone. What could go wrong? Everything. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and with their in jeopardy. Now, this is just Jack, but I don't think this was a normal storm. I don't think this is your average run-of-the-mill storm that comes down on, on that little lake. I believe this storm was demonically inspired. I believe it was sent there to do three things. To kill, steal, and destroy. To stop Jesus from going to the other side. To kill the disciples and just stop the entire gospel events. Right there. Except for one thing. Jesus is still in the boat. He may, you may think he's asleep. I know sometimes you're running around. Look, I wish Jesus would wake up. Can I have an Amen. You know how you wake him up? Call on him. You call on him. Well, what good is it to have Jesus in the boat if he's asleep? Trust me. You can trust me. It's good to have Jesus in the boat even if you think he's asleep. 
Now, th- this is now sometimes I, I do this. Sometimes I um, I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, "Is Charlotte still there?" <sighs> and sometimes she pushes me and says, "Stop snoring." But you do something. Stop it. You're killing me. Without Jesus in your boat, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it in this life, and you're not going to make it in the next life. Amen? I want you to listen to this. This is Psalms 2 and 11. Serve the Lord with, of all things, fear. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Now here is David telling the world to fear the Lord whom you can't see, you can't touch, you can't do any of those things to Him. He says, serve the Lord with fear, even though you can't see Him. Even though it may seem like He's asleep. And yet when He stood before Goliath, whom He could see and He could touch, He had no fear. Think about this. Fear God whom you can't see. And when he comes to Goliath, says that little wimp, he's just a dog, and I'm fixing to show him what kind of a dog he is in just a little bit. Now you think, you know, we have these, uh, 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 we have things that are rated nowadays, you know, it's G-rated, PG-rated. I want you to know what David is about to do to Goliath. I don't know what rating it would be, but whatever it is, when you take someone's head off and stick it on a stick, that's, and that's exactly what he did. His fear was in the right place. I'm telling you this morning, if you fear the living God, nothing else in this world can fear can put fear in your heart, and you can do anything that God has called you to do. Can I have an amen? In just a few minutes, he's going to lay Goliath in his proper place. I want you to know, I don't know what kind of storm you've got coming in your life. It may be weather. It may be a, it may be finances it may be somebody but i want you to know put fear in its proper place stand up to it and call it what it is and let god do the rest now this is as for believers we god expects us to stand up and speak to the storm shout to the wall submit yourselves to god resist the devil and he not he not he not that he should Not that he might. The Bible says he will flee from you. Can I have an amen this morning? God expects you to stand up, walk with him, talk with him, and then tell the devil to get out of your life. Can I have an amen this morning? Give the Lord praise this morning in the house, if you will. Amen. Hallelujah. Hell can't stop you. Storms can't stop you. Devils can't. Nothing can stop you. And it still seems like Jesus is unconcerned. I want you to know he has so much concern for you. He's concerned about the hairs on your head. He's concerned about the pebbles on Destin Beach. But he is concerned about you, people. He is concerned. I'd rather have Jesus asleep in my boat than to not know Jesus at all. Whoa. A lot of people have found Jesus in a boat. Jonah witnesses to the heathens. After a storm comes up on the boat while Jonah is asleep. And after Jonah wakes up, he starts preaching to these people. And you know what they do? They convert. (laughs) They turn to Jesus. They turn to God and they serve him. I don't know what kind of storm you have. But if Jesus is in the boat with you, you need to stick with it. Some people eat through their storm. Some people depress through their storm. Some people drink through their storm. Some people drug through their storm. Some people lust through their storm. And some people break through through the storm with Jesus. I want you to know about all these things. Don't, Don't get out of the boat unless Jesus tells you to. Stay in the boat. Stay in Now, if you've not been scared on the water in bad weather, I want to tell you something. There used to be a saying years ago that uh, there's no atheists in foxholes. Let me tell you something. If you're in bad weather on a boat, there's no atheists on boats either, people. You can trust me on that. There are no atheists. There are no atheists in boats in bad weather. I want to tell you something. I was on a Geneva Lake fishing one time. On my little bitty boat, I'm all by myself, and I heard it go pow about a half a mile over there. I said, "I'm okay." 
Let me tell you something. You know what that is? That's a warning. To, the lake is about to close. The lake is about to close. Be headed toward the ramp. And I said, I'm okay. And about that time, I hear the rain come across the lake, and hear it go again. Pow! <laughs> and I said, you know what? I believe I'll be taking my little boat to the ramp just as quickly as this little trolling motor will get me there. Another time I was on Hurricane Lake, and I was in a different boat this time. And you're not supposed to run big motors in Hurricane Lake. I don't know if you've been over there and know that. You're not supposed to run big motors, Brother David. And I was over there, and this storm came up, and wind was coming up, and my trolling motor wouldn't get to the, big, to, to the ramp. And I said, you know what? I don't know what they're going to do to me for running this big motor but I'm cranking it up because I'm going to the shore just as, just as quickly as I can get here. They were filled with fear. The boat was filled with water. They were filled with anxiety. They were probably checking their pockets for Xanax. Isn't that what you take for panic stuff? Like, yeah, I think it is. I'm not sure about that. I just take what Charlotte gives me and then say, yes, ma'am. And I probably doubting Thomas is on the boat crying out, we're all going to die. <laughs> we're all going to die. We're not, we're not going to make it. Now, these are experienced sailors. Blown right on course into God's hands. They expect something, but not a storm. Not a calm sea. Listen, they, they expect something. Do you know what? When they're calling on Jesus, they expect him to, bail, to wake up and start bailing water. Do you that, that's what it, okay, let me tell you another fishing story. We're on a small boat in Choctahatchee Bay. Uh, myself and th two other buddies, not very big boat. One of them was sick. And he's laying down in the boat. He's just leant back on the boat. And me and the other one, we were not thinking about anything else except fishing. And the third one raised up, and when he raised up, he put his feet over, and we were, and he was about ankle deep in water. And we didn't have anything to bail water with except Coke cans. <laughs> you know how much water you can bail with a Coke can? A lot. <laughs> you can bail a lot, people. One time I bought this boat. And it said uh, it was supposed to be self-bailing, and I didn't realize I was the self. <laughs> I, I, I was the self-bailer. They wake Jesus up and they want him to bail a little bit and paddle a little bit. People, Jesus didn't come here to bail you out, to paddle you out. He came here to change you. He didn't come here to tweak you. He came here to get you born again, saved, righteous, living for him. He came here not, for, not to fix all your problems. He came here to tell you how to fix some of your problems. Stand up to your storm and rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Yes, we need to pray some, but Jesus came here to make you a deliverer, to be a deliverer, and also to make you a deliverer. He stands up and he says, "Now this is in a storm." Now he stands up. You know they're they're scared the life out of them. Okay, you ever had the life scared out of you? Your vitamin C goes down. I mean, it just shoots you there. I mean, you're just. You know, your insides are just shaking all over. And he says to him, where is your faith at? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? There's first a moment they're scared to death because of the storm. The next moment they see him speak to the, wall, speak to the rain and speak to the wind. And then they're afraid like, oh my Lord, do you see what he just did? He is commanding even the sea. The sea obeys his voice. Isn't that something? The wind obeys his voice. The weather obeys his voice. And his people. His people sometimes don't obey his voice. God's expecting you to use what he gave you. By the way, he's not expecting you to live in a continuous storm. Did you know that? God didn't save you and deliver you for you to live in a continuous storm. 
Jesus' power is to break every chain, every, every chain, every stronghold, every devil. Listen, I, I, I believe that Jesus knew about the storm they were coming up to. He knows about the storm you're coming into or coming out of or about to happen in your life. He intends for us to be more than conquerors through Christ who made us. More than conquerors, people. He didn't just save us. He didn't save us so we, can, so we can sit over here in nice, warm America and just have it our way. He saved us to send us to those who are hurting to tell them that they, there is a way. Now I want you to listen to this. This comes from the Old Testament, and that's, this is one of my main men in the Old Testament. Joshua chapter 10, verses 12. You don't have to turn there, but. Then spake Joshua to the Lord. This is Joshua, he's fighting a battle now. Joshua spake to the Lord in the day which the Lord delivered the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said, he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still upon Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Agilon. He's fighting this battle. And he realizes that if the sun goes down, the enemy is going to escape. He's fighting this battle. You're fighting a battle. And he says, to the, he says in the midst of, listen, he did that in the midst of the children of Israel so they would know this is not some freak accident that just happened, just happened to occur. He tells that before the congregation. In the name of Jesus, son, you be still right where you're at. Don't move. Moon, in the name of Jesus, don't you move. I got a battle to fight right here, and I can't do it after dark. Can't do it after dark because they'll get away, and I don't want a single one of them getting away. That's what, what are you saying, Brother Jack? I'm telling you, God expects you, if you have to, to call on the sun and to call on the moon and to call on the stars to get God's will done in your life. Can I have an amen? He's not talking about something for himself. He's not talking about for his friends. He's talking about for the nation of Israel and for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I have an amen this morning? Speak to the moon. Speak to the sun. In the name of Jesus, it'll obey you. Give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. He's looking for you to say to this storm, get out of my way. Get out of my life, Goliath. I'll put my foot on you and you ain't going to like it. That's what God intends to raise up children, sons and daughters that will say, devil, you have no place in my life. Get out of me. You may have had your hand in my life one time and you may have thrown me on course, but I want you to know that you were taking me off course, but all the time you were putting me right where God wanted me to be, where I'd be right on time, on place, where he would be right in, I would be right in his hands, can I have an amen? Hallelujah. No, devil's not ruined your life. Your past has not ruined your life. He's blown you right on course because the steps of a righteous man are called out by God, put right on course, on the right time, at the right moment, at the right place, so Jesus will have you in the right hand. To make you deliver, he called you to be. He wants you to be a storm chaser and chase the storms out of your life. Can I have it, amen?